It was a cold, gray evening when Emma and Jack moved into their new home. The house was beautiful, an old Victorian-style building on the outskirts of town, with high ceilings, large windows, and a charm that seemed to beckon them. They had been searching for a place to settle, and this one felt right. The price was surprisingly low for such a large house, and the realtor had told them it was a good deal. Too good, perhaps. As they unpacked boxes and arranged furniture, they came across an old wardrobe that had been left in the master bedroom. It was massive, made of dark oak with intricate carvings and brass handles that gleamed faintly in the dim light. It looked antique, possibly worth a fortune. Emma had always loved unique vintage pieces, and this wardrobe intrigued her. It's beautiful, she said, running her fingers across the carved wood. Jack, however, felt uneasy about it. The wardrobe felt wrong. It seemed out of place, like it didn't belong in the otherwise bright and airy house. But Emma insisted it stayed. Little did they know, the wardrobe was hiding a dark secret, one that would soon begin to unravel in terrifying ways. The first few nights in the house were calm, almost peaceful. But on the third night, as the clock struck midnight, Emma awoke to a strange sound. It was soft at first, like a distant tapping. She sat up in bed, trying to locate the source, but everything seemed still. Jack, sleeping next to her, didn't stir. She lay back down, brushing it off as the house settling, but then the knocking came again. This time it was louder, more distinct, coming from inside the wardrobe. Emma froze. Her heart skipped a beat. The knocking continued, steady and rhythmic, as if someone was trapped inside, desperate to get out. She reached over to shake Jack awake, but as her hand touched his arm, she hesitated. What if she was imagining it? What if it was just the wind or the house's creaks? She couldn't ignore it any longer. She grabbed her phone and texted Jack, not wanting to disturb him too much. Did you hear that? She typed. A few seconds later, his phone buzzed and he groggily reached over to check it. Jack didn't respond immediately, but a moment later his voice broke the silence. What are you talking about? He mumbled, his eyes still half shut. Emma sat up and listened again. The knocking was louder now, almost frantic. It's coming from the wardrobe, she whispered. Jack turned toward the wardrobe with a frown. There's nothing in there, he said, but his voice lacked conviction. It's probably the wind. Emma wasn't so sure. The knocking persisted, now sharp and urgent. Emma couldn't stand it anymore. She swung her legs out of bed and stood up. I'm going to check, she said, her voice shaking. No, Em, Jack said, now more awake and alarmed. You don't know what's in there. It's probably just some animal or a loose pipe. But Emma, driven by a strange compulsion, ignored him. She walked across the dark room toward the wardrobe, every step sending a ripple of cold through her. The knocking was louder now, almost as if someone, or something, was pounding from the inside. Her hand trembled as she reached for the brass handle. The air around her felt thick like it was charged with static. She hesitated, but then, with a deep breath, she opened the wardrobe door. It was empty, nothing but clothes, old, dusty, and forgotten hung inside. No one was there. No one had been there. But as Emma closed the door, she swore she heard a whisper, a faint guttural murmur, like a voice calling out from within the wood. She recoiled, her heart pounding in her chest. She rushed back to the bed, pulling the covers tightly around her, but the knocking continued, louder, faster, and more frantic. The next morning, Emma could barely shake the feeling of dread the knocking had stopped, but the cold that filled the room had not. Jack, sensing her unease, finally agreed to research the house's history. He had a feeling there was more to this wardrobe than just creaks and old wood. What he discovered sent a chill down his spine. The house had once belonged to a couple, Isabella and David, who had moved in years before. The neighbors remembered them as quiet, private people. They hadn't been there long before something tragic happened. Isabella had disappeared without a trace. David, her husband, had left the country suddenly, and no one knew why. 
It was only a few weeks later that the neighbors started to complain about the smell coming from the house. When the police finally forced their way inside, they discovered the horrific truth. Isabella's body had been locked inside the wardrobe, hidden away by her husband, who had tortured and murdered her before fleeing the country. He had left behind a trail of blood and broken dreams, and now his soul, along with Isabella's, was trapped within the walls of that very wardrobe. David had died in a car accident shortly after fleeing, and the house had been left abandoned. No one had been around to claim it, and when it finally went to auction, the furniture, including the cursed wardrobe, was sold to the furniture shop from where Emma and Jack had purchased it. Over the following nights, the knocking grew louder. Sometimes it sounded like someone was trying to claw their way out. Emma would hear whispers too. Faint at first, but growing clearer, the voice of a woman sobbing, calling out for help. It wasn't just in her head. Jack had heard it too, though he refused to admit it. He started having vivid nightmares, nightmares where he saw a woman's face, pale and bloodied, staring at him through the wardrobe's mirror. The house became colder, no matter how high they turned the heat. A constant, oppressive chill hung in the air, especially around the wardrobe. Emma, now unable to sleep, would lie awake at night, staring at the wardrobe, waiting for something, anything, to happen. One night, the knocking was louder than ever before. It was frantic, desperate. Emma knew something had changed. Something had awakened. She couldn't take it anymore. She stood up, her heart hammering in her chest, and walked toward the wardrobe. This time, she didn't hesitate. She opened the door wide, and as she did, the room seemed to grow darker, colder. A shadow moved in the corner of her eye. Something shifted inside the wardrobe, something that wasn't supposed to be there. The whispers came again, louder this time, a scream of anguish that pierced the silence. Then, as if in slow motion, the wardrobe door slammed shut on its own. Emma stumbled backward, terror clawing at her chest. And then, the voice came. It wasn't a whisper anymore. It was a scream, a deafening, guttural scream that seemed to come from within the very walls. Help me, let me out! The voice was unmistakable, Isabella's voice filled with rage and sorrow. Suddenly, the wardrobe doors burst open and from within, a cold, spectral figure stepped out. A woman, pale as death, her eyes hollow and filled with endless grief. She looked at Emma, her mouth opening as if to scream again, but no sound came out. She reached out, her cold fingers brushing Emma's face, and for a moment Emma could feel the weight of the woman's pain, her torment. Help me, Isabella's ghost whispered, her voice a dry rasp. Emma backed away, stumbling in fear. She wanted to run, but her legs wouldn't move. The room was closing in on her, the shadows growing thicker, suffocating. And just as suddenly as it had appeared, the figure vanished, leaving nothing but the cold, empty wardrobe behind. The knocking stopped. But Emma knew, deep down, that the curse of the wardrobe hadn't ended. It was only just beginning. The following day, Emma and Jack couldn't take it any longer. They had to leave. They packed their bags, determined to never return to the house again. As they stood outside, looking back at the mansion that had become their prison, Emma turned to Jack, her face pale. We can't just leave, she whispered. We need to destroy the wardrobe. It's the only way. Jack nodded. But when they turned to leave, the wardrobe stood there, watching them from the window, as if mocking their escape. And somewhere, deep inside, the knocking began again. The house remained abandoned, and the wardrobe still waits, locked, in the darkness. Its secret lives on, buried deep within the old wood. Anyone who dares to enter will feel its cold fingers close around their soul, and the knocking will never stop.